welcome to the Dumb Original Music and Alumni Podcast, a show which takes you around the most exciting original music of any kind on or around the peninsula. My name is George Bone, Alumni Relations Officer. And I'm Taylor Morris, Stoneman's President. And joining with me today is second year archaeology student Oscar Kaziltas under his project name Alterings. After six years of classical training at the Istanbul University State Conservatoire uh, and taking performance and composition lessons from the multi-award winning Soviet-born pianist uh, Angelika Akbar Rosenbaum, Oz decided to take things in a different direction. Now learning the guitar inspired by artists and bands such as Jeff Buckley, Low Raw and Radiohead, Oz's writing style inched ever so closer to an alternative slash art rock soundscape. Now, bringing in classical influences, including Rachmaninoff and Chopin, Outer Rings is a project that aims to expand and put out sounds inspired by daily life, fused with a diverse range of genres in the near future. Outer Rings' song has been performed at the Stag Sessions and Open Mic Night in Collingwood, as well as debuting with the song Aliens through BBC Introducing on BBC Newcastle Radio. Me and Taylor are both incredibly excited to have Oscar in for the second time in three days, because the first recording cut out. <laughs> so now, Oscar... How are you? Hello. I'm 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 doing great, thanks. How how have you guys been? I mean, I'm I'm fine. <laughs> I mean I I again I said this on the first podcast that went completely awry at the last second, but Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we should we should make audiences aware that uh, the last time we tried to record this, it was a 45-minute pod um, that only I had my audio for. Uh, Taylor and Oscar were uh, apparated from existence. We just thought it'd be more fun if we just completely went off book and had no podcast by the end of it. Yeah, exactly. So, Oz, where are you, where are you recording uh, from today, just out of curiosity? Uh, I'm in Istanbul right now. I mean, I I will be here for the like next uh, week and a half because um, I mean, my sister's getting married this weekend, literally. Oh, so amazing! That's, nice. That's, that's a thing. Woo! Yeah. But yeah, uh, I mean, I've I basically live with my parents while I'm here, so it's it's a different experience than university, definitely. So when the pandemic uh, hit and uh, in its sort of main stage in March. Um, I guess getting from Durham to Istanbul was a very tricky sort of flight path to go go on. Exactly. I mean, I literally caught the last plane like back and I didn't even know that it was the last plane because the airspace shut down literally while while like I was two hours into flight. So it was really <laughs> so it was really exciting, you know, just learning that I got the last plane you know, uh, <laughs> from my parents uh, when I landed. And, like, they made us sign all kinds of papers and stuff because, you know... It's it's really um, exciting not knowing the state of the world until you land in it again. Exactly. <laughs> Turkey's back open again, so, you know. Is it really? Yeah, it's been for the last, like, two months. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, like... Um, so, speaking of lockdown, we wanted to talk to you about, sort of, musically, like we did with Flytrap Honey uh, the other week, we wanted to talk about how, musically, you've been dealing with sort of this period in time because I know when talking to the Flytrap Honey lads they were talking about how they communicated sort of frequently with each other on trying to get different ideas going and trying to sort of fuse what time they had together and stitch it together in a, in a coherent form with you being the only artist in your project how was lockdown then musically for you what how did you plan out your your sort of creative process as it were I mean, exactly. Being a single like uh, artist, like who doesn't really collaborate much, but who wishes to collaborate in the future, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I I don't really want to be the musical loner that you know many people pursue, like in their musical careers. Uh, but I, yeah, the being a single artist, it's definitely uh, you focus on yourself a lot. You uh, become more introverted, maybe. I don't really know. Uh, but the basically. The essence of it is that uh, we, uh, as you know, songwriters, uh, usually you know interact with the world a lot, and um, being unable to do that um, really drives home the idea that you should look inwards rather than outwards. Um, and, and and when you're creating songs, especially, uh, it starts to show more often because. Um, uh, because most of my songs uh, aren't really, um, I don't know, they're not really the extroverted, they're not really the outgoing type. 
uh, no, like you wouldn't listen to them in a disco <laughs> or a nightclub or a bar or so, or stuff. Like you, you would usually want to. I, I at least I imagine that the type of person who would listen to my songs, who would want to, would be more reserved. So this lockdown has been really an interesting experience in that regard. In that, like I've been making the kind of music uh, I've been make uh, I've been making the kind of music. Uh, that I am doing in a much more suitable environment uh, to the you know style that I'm usually familiar with. And in saying that, you do talk about interacting with the world and sort of the outside world and that sort of disconnect uh, by working as a, an individual artist. And I know that you were planning to sort of show some of the work that you were the doing at the, uh, the Doman Showcase, which sadly got canceled in March. Um, uh, so how did that sort of make you feel in that sense? I know how to make you feel is quite a bland question, but sort of just generally sort of how did it, how did it affect you sort of mentally and sort of creatively then? I mean, yeah, there, there was definitely a sense of anticipation, like before the like showcase was going to happen. And like, I was trying to get ready for that. I was, you know, getting in the mental state to let me perform. And I don't usually perform often live, uh, so that was going to be a really special thing for me. Uh, but like, uh, since that got cancelled, I had to, you know, go again back into a studio or like a studio environment or a studio mindset rather, like, uh, you know, uh, because performing live and trying to record songs or performing live and trying to write songs uh, is a really different uh, period that you go through. And uh, especially if you're playing live, you have to think about uh, not really the stage fright element, but letting other people hear your music. And uh, when you basically connect with someone, through your music it's definitely more it's definitely different to what would have been if they'd heard it you know uh, not in a live you know uh mm. platform yeah so basically it definitely tra like transformed my personal uh you know outlook into the future and uh i i, I still love live performances of course but uh, i think recording has to be put you know effort into in order to become a good live performer as well so yeah i've been trying to improve on that front uh massively mm. i guess yep. yeah so kind of in respect to your improvement on yourself your development as a musician um i say i think i think personally that a lot of musicians go through like a sort of style and tone change um so would you say that you've sort of had that happen to you, you know, transitioning in from like first year and obviously from your background in classical music now into this more alternative art rock soundscape, what, what has kind of happened there? And where would you say you are today? Uh, well, for the last year, I've, I mean, I, I would guess l that most people uh, would split the year into two different, very different periods uh, in which they had different you know, experiences, definitely pre-lockdown and post-lockdown, uh, your experiences change vastly. And uh, especially going through it in, like, a university, uh, you know, environment, that's, uh, that's very different to going through it as you would on your own. Uh, but uh, mostly my... Uh, I guess improvement or uh, change or transformation throughout this year was uh, stylistically and emotionally uh, I I might have become more self-reserved I might have become more you know um, reclusive maybe I, I don't know <laughs> um, and uh, yeah I, I think that's definitely reflected into my music quite a lot um but uh yeah i i th i still think it's uh, uh like in my you know in my heart i think i'm still the same person but 
yeah, I, I mean, it's all gone to <laughs> shit. So, yeah. it's, it's absolutely it's, fair, yeah. given the state it's, of the world. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, no, yeah. I, I find that the, the more people yeah. I talk to, especially people that are obviously dealing with the arts, not only just music, but, you know, 2D, 3D, and I know somebody who sculpts and stuff, and just there's either been an inspiration or there's been a block. But um, a lot of them have said that this has been a crucial moment for them in where their change from... I guess what they'd say, like the way they look at the world in terms of a lighter, and I say that in air quotes, as I know in our first podcast, you're saying that's a bit of a misnomer. But um, if it isn't, if you're not coming from a lighter to a darker place or vice versa, what kind of um, definitional term would you put on it? Because obviously you said you've become more self-reserved. So where has that taken the mood and the ambiance of your music? Uh, Well, yeah, uh, I I think before like, lockdown i was looking into the future a bit more uh sarcastically uh, that's, I mean, that's very that's interesting word. yeah i mean just seeing all these different people talk about the future how it's going to happen how it's going to be great how it's going to be you know an improvement for everyone involved um yeah i i was still you know ske- very skeptical of that um but uh i think that level of you know optimism um has gone to you know complete disarray at, at the moment for everyone i think you know being optimistic about the future is not really that much of an option as it was six months ago or as it was seven months ago um and i see that you know people's attitudes towards um you know the, the world around them changed massively and um yeah i think that's uh that's basically what uh what i've been inspired by in making my yeah, music that's, as well i mean to be honest with you that makes a lot of sense i kind of get what you mean when you say looking into the future sarcastically there's a lot of talk about how the world progresses and i feel like i haven't seen that yet in the same way so yeah so outer rings so when we knew you, it used to be Outer Lights, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that Outer Rings is now the name that you're uh, you know, going to be produced on and going to be working under, I suppose. So what, in, what inspired that change? And how would you sort of describe the project now that it's sort of been rebranded? Um, I, think def- I think it's all, uh, I think it all arose from the fact that I didn't feel Outer Lights was a you know, suitable name for the act I was putting on. Uh, mostly Outer Rings describes to me, or I, Outer Rings as a name seems to me like it describes social relationships and being the outer ring of a social relationship uh, is what I've always felt like, uh, e- even with my closest friends. And uh, that's mostly because I was, you know, uh, keeping myself in always. Uh, so music especially is my only outlet uh, when it comes to, you know, emotions, when it comes to what I think, what I feel. Um, And I think Outer Rings is a very uh, descriptive name for what I wanted the act to be like. I I wanted it to represent that social isolation. I wanted to like have that parasocial uh, element to it. Uh, that's so that's why I chose outer rings why uh, I didn't really like keeping outer lights was outer lights seemed like a you know something that uh, I mean brings joy to people something that uh, you know feels lighthearted something that feels um, very happy or go merry round like yeah, that that was just not what I was going for. Yeah, I was going to say, therefore, in that sense, the name that you originally had was sort of grating with the times that we're currently in at the moment, because it because it created it therefore created something sort of linguistically that didn't exist. And it was like, okay, I need to adapt my art as everyone else is adapting around the world so the name sort of naturally like it it can show its roots in the previous name but obviously it's now an entirely different being as it were yeah uh i definitely agree with that but i didn't really i mean i I think that's a very fair point but i didn't really think about that level of you know (laughs) i didn't think with that level of intricacy (laughs) when i was coming up with a name 
I didn't really, I mean, think that much into it, but I did just write what I felt. That's what it became. I really, I honestly think that, you know, when an artist can be kind of frank with themselves and say, I need to adapt and, you know, or, or even more like saying, I, I need to outgrow this or I have outgrown it and it's time to like face up to the music, pun fully intended. Um, <laughs> I just think that that's something that has to be said. Um, you know, so all of the greats went through that whole uh, transitional period. I only recently found out that Led Zeppelin is called Led Zeppelin or was called Led Zeppelin. Well, it is called Led Zeppelin because their first um, studio that heard their first EP said, this band is terrible. It's going to go down like a Led Zeppelin. Um, so, you know, that, that's taking, <laughs> Led Zeppelin lemonade, taking a good thing out of a bad thing. But uh, either, either way, um, yeah, I would just have to ask as a, as a final rounded up point, um, you know, you've had, from what you've commented on before, a pretty drastic tonal change in the last six months. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? You used the word industrial, I believe. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've, I've started incorporating all sorts of, you know, genres in my music. I mean, uh, especially stuff like jazz, blues, I mean, industrial even. That's, I mean, that's very far-fetched, like, uh, presenting one of my songs as industrial, but it's not really, uh, it's not really that far off. Uh, so, um, I mean, I, it's, it's always a drastic change for me trying to, you know, uh, progress with my music kind of, because, mm. uh, I, I mean, I, I come from a classical background. I, I, I usually play, you know, all, also sort of like Rachmaninoff, Prokofiev, uh, like I could play to you Tchaikovsky, but this was never something that I'd imagine in the future that I would be doing, you know, alternative sla slash indie slash rock-ish yeah. kind of music. Um, so, yeah, the, for the last six months, it's it's definitely accelerated quite a lot uh, because mm. of the, you know, the shape the world is in right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're all, you know, I think we're all kind of caged in r at the moment uh yeah. so uh whether whether we are actually legally or not <laughs> um, um <laughs> it's a whole different thing <laughs> yeah it's it, it's a whole different thing we're all you know uh, at its core we're all um trying to uh, become uh free of this isolation whether some people are going about it you know in a totally non you know um non-positive way or a non you know uh influential way uh is a completely different story uh however yes uh, i think that lockdown has uh accelerated and quite like improved even some elements of my music uh especially stuff like my i don't know more yeah. jazzy stuff yeah <laughs> even if you could say it yeah which I haven't really like shared with a lot of people, uh, but still, it's in there <laughs> and somewhere. In, in that sense, considering the fact that your you say that your musical process is accelerated, in fact, that is now physically emboldened in the fact that one of your singles was was on BBC Music Introduction to the Northeast. Um, that was your song. Um, that was your song, Alien, uh, which we'll also be previewing um, uh, after this section of the podcast. Um, so. I did want to talk about sort of your experience working with, uh, I say quasi working with the BBC. So what, what did you feel was the, the process in applying for sort of this, for your song to, to appear on the radio? And indeed, like, how did it, how did it feel hearing your song on the radio? Because that you can, you can feel loads of different things. You can feel anxious. You can feel happy. How did, how did you feel? Uh, yeah, basically, I mean, I, I didn't really imagine ever, like I didn't ever imagine BBC playing my song i love the bbc <laughs> by the way i it's the best thing about british <laughs> culture it's the best thing that's ever been you know invented yeah the, the, re in the, the rest world. of this podcast it is going to be censored by the editor and it's just going to be me saying rule britannia just in 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 bro broken up letters <laughs> <laughs> but yeah sorry yeah uh so uh, i mean i just sent i just saw this facebook post you know saying oh upload your music for bbc introducing and i uh, I just clicked on it and just sent two songs. Uh, I mean, I didn't really think they were ever going to play my song, but it, they did, and it feels quite gratifying, like self-gratification, mm. yeah. kind of. But it's not 
uh, I mean, someone else liked your music. What? That's like. That's insane. That's amazing. Yeah. That's insane. That even if it's one person who liked the music, even if it's just one editor from the BBC. Mm. They'll remember you a... for sure. You know, it's yeah, like exactly. Talking that. about repeated details, I remember I was on. I I debuted one of my songs on BBC Radio Essex last January, and still they keep texting me like, "Oh, hi, it's <laughs> from BBC Essex. We'd like to talk to you about some stuff." So you're definitely on the books, if anything. I think so, and uh, very on topic. I I think they might play one of my songs as well, like one of my other. Songs oh, because... sick! Nice. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I. It's it's a more like it's a much more rhythmic song than like Alien, but yeah. like I'm 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 interested in what like they might think of it. So but, so yeah, ultimately, would Newcastle? You... <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, would you recommend the uh, the process to other artists? Would you recommend them sort of put their music out there like you did? Uh, I mean, definitely. I was scared of you know putting it out there because I mean people just might not like it. It might not even get played. I mean, but then I thought about it and it's like, what do you have to lose? What do you, I mean, you just put your songs out there and they might just, they might just play it. And that will be very, very important for you in the future. I think just trying to show people that, oh, someone liked your music or like your music got aired on the radio. And that's like a very positive thing. And I don't think there is any reason that you should buy yourself from that. Leading into that smoothly on then, here is a clip from Oscar Kaziltas's Alien and also his original Home. You can have a listen to Aliens and, in fact, a lot of other of Oscar's songs on SoundCloud and YouTube. The links will be down below in the description of this video. If you're listening on Anchor, like we said before, please move up on Anchor and go onto YouTube. It will support us a lot more. Um, in final parting words, is there anything, is there any sort of advice that you'd like to give to uh, younger musicians or, in fact, musicians who are in... Uh, in years above you and think oh i really want to do what what this guy's doing do you have any do you have any advice sure i mean the ultimate advice is i think you know don't close yourself off to what to the world because uh it's just uh, mentally degrading to both you and people who you might miss you know opportunities playing with um you know especially if you go out and seek other musicians they will mostly accept uh you into you know playing with you and especially uh if you're both you know inter interested in the same genres of music they will most likely you know um be very very um willing to do music with you and that's something you shouldn't uh miss that's something you shouldn't really turn away from uh, so ultimately yeah. collaborate 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 Exactly. I mean, if uh, if you want to go alone uh, with it, I mean, that's completely fine as well. I mean, you know, it depends on what your yeah. music is and it depends on what you your vision is for the future, for yourself, yeah. most mostly. Brilliant. Most well, well, Oscar Kaziltas, thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's been so, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.